As we saw in the last video, it is very important to find the centroid of simple shapes. In this video, we will be discussing about the centroid of a triangle. We have a regular triangle here. It has a base length of L and a height of H. The area of this triangle will be half into base into height. In our case, it will be half into L into H. The next step is to consider a small elemental strip or an elemental area in this triangle. This small strip will have a length of L1 and height of dy. It will be at a distance of y from the reference axis BC. The area of the small strip will be L1 into dy as it is a rectangle. We can replace this L1 by a new equation using the property of similar triangles. There are two triangles in this diagram. The upper small triangle and the complete triangle. By the property of similar triangles, we have L1 by L equals H minus Y divided by H. Here, H minus Y is the height of upper triangle. By simplifying this equation, L1 will be H minus Y into L divided by H. This is the new equation for L1. We will substitute the value of L1 in our equation for area. Now, the area will be H minus Y into L by H and the whole thing multiplied by dy. After this, we will consider the moment of the small area about the reference axis BC. The moment is force multiplied by perpendicular distance. We consider the elemental area as force and we know the perpendicular distance of this area from the axis. So, Moment of elemental area is equal to area into y. By substituting values for area, it will be h minus y into L into dy by h multiplied by y. By rearranging L into dy into h into y by h minus L into y square into dy by h. On further simplification, ly into dy minus ly square into dy by h. This is the moment of area of one elemental strip inside this triangle. The triangle can be constructed by such elemental areas itself. As we see here, we get tiny areas which make up the whole triangle. These areas will be at a different distances from reference axis. We need to add up all these areas to find the total moment of area of the triangle. The easiest way to do is to integrate our moment of area equation. When we talk about integration, we should always consider the limits of integration. Here, the distance of these elemental areas from the reference axis will be changing. So, we should consider that as the limit. The distance of the rectangle at the bottom from the reference axis is almost zero and the distance of the rectangle at the top is h from the axis. So, we should integrate between zero and h. Considering all that, we have integral of ly into dy minus integral of ly square divided by h into dy. On integration, the first term will be l into y square by 2 under the limits 0 to h because integral of y is y square by 2. The second term after the integration will be like this. L by H as they are constants, the values don't change. Y square will become Y cube by 3. On simplifying the equation, LH square divided by 2 minus LH cube by 3H. On further simplification, we can cancel out H in the second term. Now, 
the equation will be LH square by 2 minus LH square by 3. If we take LCM and simplify further, we'll get the total moment of area as LH square divided by 6. This is the summation of moment of elemental areas and part 1 of our derivation. Moving to the second part, as we did in the derivation of centroid of rectangle, we'll be using the principle of moments. According to the principle, the moment of elemental areas will be equal to the moment of total area of the triangle. But what is the total area of triangle? It is half into base into height. That will be half into L into H. Therefore, the moment of this area about the reference axis BC will be the moment of total area. We know that the moment is force multiplied by the distance. While calculating moment of small elemental areas, we considered the distances of area from the reference axis. But when we have to calculate the moment of total area, it is not clear which distance to consider. It's here the centroid of the triangle will come into the picture. As the centroid is the geometrical center of the shape, we assume that the entire area of triangle is concentrated at that point. Because of that, we should consider the distance of centroid from reference axis for the calculation of moment. Then we have moment of total area as half into L into H multiplied by Y bar. What is Y bar? Y bar is the distance of centroid from reference X axis. Now, according to the principle of moments, the summations of moments by individual forces will be equal to the moment caused by the resultant which replaces all the individual forces. In our case, the resultant is the triangle and individual forces are elemental areas. So, we equate both the moments. That is, L H square by 6 equals to half into L into H into Y bar. L and H gets cancelled on both the sides of the equation. So, we are left with H by 6 equal to half into Y bar. If we take half to the other side, it will be 2H by 6 is equal to Y bar. On simplification and rearranging, we get Y bar is equal to H by 3. This means from the base of the triangle, centroid will be at a distance of one third of the height. In other sense, we can also take it at two third of the height from the triangle from the top. So that's about centroid of a triangle. We get it in the terms of the height of the triangle. It's time to sum up what we have learned so far. We considered an elemental area, calculated its area and moment, integrated elemental areas and equated the moment of total area. At last, we derived the expression for the centroid of triangle in terms of height. In the next video, we'll derive the expression for centroid of another simple shape. See you there.